Hey there, guys. Before we start this episode, I got to apologize. Some mic settings were a little bit off, so it's not going to be the best audio quality, but it does get fixed pretty early in the first quarter. How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 13, and we have our final game of the regular season at hand today. Sitting at 9-2, number 20 in the country, we face up against 7-3 uh, Duke, who's not had a great conference record, but are favored to win this game as the lower overall. 12 prospects visiting for the Blue Devils. Um, let's go and see right off the bat what the top 25 polls look like. And then we need to look at conference standings because that matters a ton. Texas and Oklahoma will play this week. That's a ranked matchup. Oregon, Washington, a very contentious rivalry playing uh, this week as well. Ohio State and Washington, five and six, just lost last week. Uh, any other losses or anything crazy? Kansas lost to Texas. They're sitting at number one. Arizona State at nine, lost to Colorado. Um, and Arkansas and TCU will play this week. Vanderbilt and Boston College also both lost and drop out of the rankings. Uh, media poll. Where are we? Or is it consistent? We, we dropped a spot. <laughs> The polls in this season just do not like us. We dropped a spot after winning. Uh, it was a close game against a pretty mediocre UNC, but it's a win anyways. Uh, you're going to tell me that we're worse than a 7-3 Florida State? That's kind of rude. Uh, how about the BCS poll? Sitting in 24th there, we dropped down from 22nd. So just not a whole lot of love. Um, not the same rank in any of the three polls. How about this? Conference standings. Do we have a chance to make it back to the conference championship? We do. We are in the lead of the division. That means Virginia lost two of their last three games. Two of their last two games. Three in a row for them. Oh, that is so good for us. Duke, North Carolina, and Georgia Tech knock Virginia out of the running for the ACC Coastal. So if we win this game, we will be going to back to the conference championship. Most likely to play Notre Dame. Um, I think they're done with their conference schedule. Six and two. They play NC State. So they need to beat NC State and Florida State. Um, do they have a chance? No, I think it, because Notre Dame has the tiebreaker. Did Clemson beat Notre Dame? Clemson did beat Notre Dame. So if Clemson beats Boston College and Notre Dame loses to NC State, they will swap spots there. But it looks like we're going to be playing a, potentially a 99 overall fighting Irish if we make it to that conference championship since they're going up against a 4-6 and six NC State who is 1-6 in, in conference. And I'm just going to go ahead and lay down the gauntlet right here. If I make it into the conference championship and you guys hit 100 likes on this video we'll go back to back uploads and tomorrow i will post the conference championship game of course we do have to make it there for uh for the back to back to stand but it you know gives you guys a little bit to work towards bowl projections we already know we have a ton of finalists but what are they going to say that we're playing in again this season we are moving to an 18 playoff so if we win the conference we should be making uh uh Okay, we should we should be making the playoff anyways, but we are slated for the Orange Bowl against an eight and one Cincinnati, even though they're unranked. Um, I like it. That feels like a matchup that we could win pretty well. Similar overalls, uh, everything looks good except for they get turnovers more than us, but that's just how we play. You know, we like to help the other team out by turning the ball over. Um, before we play this game, we'll do our recruiting. And then I think we'll do one of our two back-to-back -back bye weeks after the game. But let's jump into this and see where it is that we're standing. We, <laughs> I should take Kyle Edwards off the board, but I'm not going to because I, I'm just like, I'm hurt that we don't have him. We did pick up our first couple of commits after the last game and we have... Uh, a lead now with Mike Shelby after the massive visit. Got us a ton of points. Actually, I'm curious. 750, that's beautiful. Aaron Jenkins, we're up quite a bit close to locking out Northwestern with the 80 overall athlete. With Anthony Moore, we have had our visit, but the two teams behind us have their visits upcoming, so our uh, lead should be erased a little bit. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Ben Cooper, we're looking solid now with the lead. Uh, Timothy Sutton, we were trying to jump in here, but I'm not sure that it's going to happen. 
um, just sitting at that weird 1800 behind. No change made. He's 90% locked. I think I'm going to pull. Uh, we should pull away from him. We, at this stage, we have such an abysmal recruiting class that I am absolutely terrified. So many guys that we're close with, but we just uh, we aren't quite there. So let's start to give points to anybody who we can. And it doesn't matter how bad or good they might be. We need to get people to commit. So um, instead of giving points to BJ Hogan, let's go by biggest lead. And if we have a big lead, I don't necessarily need to uh, give them points. But if we're close, we're going to give them points to try and jump up in there. And we have nobody ready for visits, which is good for people without scholarships. Uh, we want to offer those right now. Only 20 guys on the board, but I mean... There's a lot of guys that I don't know if we're going to be able to fight for. Leads with a lot of them, but they're just not committing yet. So hopefully we get that to happen soon. Like right here, how is Kevin West not committed? <laughs> we're 4,600 points in front of South Carolina. Um, so we have guys that we can get. We just have to hope that it happens this week. In terms of bonus points, we have moved to an A- minus on our championship contender, so that'll give us a little bit. Our conference prestige is still sitting at a B, though, so it's very close between those top four conferences, and then there's a big drop-off to us, and then a big drop-off to the Americans. So right now, the worst of the Power 5 conferences, which is a bit of a bummer, but hopefully uh, if we continue to win, maybe we can pull ourselves up into the B+, plus or maybe the A- minus spot. So our recruiting is done for this week. Let's go and play on the road here at Duke. We know they're solid. Um, I'm not sure what to think about how this is going to go. Let's just wear the all whites this time out. And let's see, Duke, they have some very cool stuff. Um, they've got the different types of helmets. They've got the black and blue, the all blue, kind of typical looking blue and white, the black with the uh, script helmet and just the normal uh let's go with the i kind of like the uh the black jersey just a little bit different from their standard home um but it's a nice little bit of flair so 90 overall for us to their 88 we have the 93 to 88 edge on offense and they have the slight two overall edge on defense with a 90 uh offensively they're seven and three. They rank as one of the best in the country. They score a ton of points. They pass really, really well. Um, their defense is nothing to sneeze at either. So they have quite a bit going on for them. Maybe some injuries. Their top players, 92, 91, 90, free safety, punter, kicker. That's very good news for us. So their best players aren't all that good. They must have a decent amount of depth. Uh, they have more injuries than us. A left tackle and a right end out for sure. And potentially a defensive tackle as we are still missing our starting running back in CJ Beasley. So it is a snowy game here. Uh, at Wallace Wade Stadium. Hopefully that doesn't harm our uh, our tropical boys here. Uh, maybe a uh, great decision to wear the all-white? Who knows? Maybe it hurts us. We will definitely blend in to the surroundings as we lose the toss. Tails fails us. Five mile an hour win today as we will be starting with the ball. So let's see. What is it that Marquise Jackson can do for us in this game? It is a returnable kick. Marquise had a really good game last week. It was about to be incredible, but penalties kind of uh, prevented him from getting a couple of touchdowns. And we will start this drive from the 28-yard line. I'm looking at the bubble screen. We're going to throw it. And, oh, wow, Grayson got hit immediately. Didn't have a chance to get the throw off, so we are stopped on first down. That's a shame because I'm pretty certain we were going to get positive yards on that play. Second and 10, we will hand it off to Braden Bennett trying to get positive yards and more manageable third down, and we do just that. The problem now is that we have to go to the air, and we have to convert this third down. Looking maybe over the middle, maybe we can just scramble for it. Grayson trying to pick it up, and we'll get out of bounds. Even though we still took a hit, that's a bit of a shame. He's got the first down. In my eyes, this is a must-win game. So if we cheese it a little bit, you can't blame me. Hoping for the best. Throw out to my check down in Logan Malden for six yards. And on this second down, we will run the ball. They're pressed up quite a bit early. We'll see if that hurts them in the, uh, in the long run as Bennett gets three yards and gives us a 
third and one to deal with. So we'll come out in the I form on third and one and just run it up the middle. Let Bennett get as many lead blockers as he can get and we'll get four yards. First and 10. We're going to go ahead and step back to pass. Getting outside the pocket. Not really seeing anybody right bumper potentially, but it's too risky as Grayson makes some moves, makes a man miss. <laughs> Got another guy, unfortunately, on the step back. Just uh, stepped out of bounds, but a great carry. I'm going to apologize if the microphone was a little bit uh, weird early. Changed a couple settings there between plays. And now we're going to go with the bubble screen that didn't work the first time out, but it might work this time. Brayden Bennett oh, getting the catch, getting some blocks, and getting nine yards just outside the 10. And we will try to pick up this first and goal with the second and one carry. Braden bouncing it to the edge. Doesn't have the speed, and it's not quite enough for the first down. Thought we would be able to bounce it to the edge because he's a quick back, but... It wasn't there, and on third and inches, we will hand it off, and this is four-down territory as far as I'm concerned, but we won't need the third down. Brayton with the first and goal down to the three-yard line. Great opportunity now to get on the board on this opening drive with a touchdown. We will try the run. I say Conley, the third stringer, comes in for his first carry in I don't know how many games and loses a yard. So it is second and goal, and we will hand it off to Bennett. I want to get into a good spot for the fullback dive, but we won't need to. Brayton's into the end zone. Good three-yarder on that touchdown. It gives us a 7-0 lead here. We burned more than half of that first quarter on this opening drive. So we are kicking into the wind uh, in this first quarter, which is good news for us because, of course, on the fourth quarter, that means that we'll get the wind at our back, and you never know when you're going to need that little bit of extra wind to help you get distance on a field goal late in the game. They had a pretty sizable return to get out past the 30-yard line. And we're going to expect a lot of passing from this team. One of the best in the country statistically. The quarterback, though, nobody open. Our man coverage holding these guys down. He has to throw it away. I'm very much aware that we are likely to get dusted on uh, quite a few of these plays, but we're going to stick with it anyways. Charles Steele needs to get there. Mm, we gave up seven yards, but it is third down. We're going to get real risky with it. Safety blitz on third and three, hoping that they do run in it. Oh, it was a counter. Diggs gets his tackle shaken off, and it's Kale Mackey there to hit him, but he got to midfield anyways. That counter just always works so well against us. I'm always overcommitting to the angle that they're taking, just like we saw there. And, oh, back-to-back -back carries with massive yards. So this is a team that statistically has passed really well, but we're making them look like they can run with the best of them. Hopefully we can slow that down a little bit. This is going to be a draw. And again, I just overcommitted to the uh, the gap and just completely missed, and we gave up 16 more yards. Bring in the strong safety on the blitz. This first down, I'm absolutely expecting them to pass it. Would be uh, unlike them not to. Quarterback trying to scramble, and he's bounced around the pocket for a while before finally getting sacked for a loss of three. It was John Taylor that got in there to disrupt things, which is great news as the quarterback keeping it on the option and got so much great keep from Luca Diamant for 12 yards and a third and one. They'll come out with uh, four wide receivers, but we're bringing the big blitz. I cannot allow them to run for this. Hopefully the pressure gets there, and it does. Diamant had nowhere to go. Loses six yards on another sack there. JT Kill in the backup getting that one. So we will hold Duke to a field goal on their opening drive of the game. Uh, we're going to just be in the safe zone in case they fake this, but looks to be good. Kicker gets it up. No problem. 7-3 to three here as we are just about at the end of the first quarter. I would love it if we could end the quarter with a kick return touchdown, but... Again, wind at their back in this first quarter means it's going to be real difficult to get the distance. Oh, Marquise made a man just look embarrassed out there. Got a good return for us. Looking for the bubble again, but I don't like what we're seeing. So instead, we'll call just a quick pass play. We will finish this first quarter with some slants. They're bringing a lot of pressure. Trying to get it off. We find Bedgood. He holds onto it, but took a shot immediately. If that, if that guy missed, that's a touchdown. And a one. Up 7-3. A chance to increase the lead. We've had some really nice moves. 
Uh, and some good plays. Defense did a good job holding for a field goal. Just need to keep up the pressure. We'll run it on this second down to open up quarter number two of the game. Braden Bennett with a weird spin move. Just kind of rolled along the back. Some of his linemen, but enough for the first down. We'll look to throw on this first down. Again, they're bringing so much pressure. This is a risky throw. Logan Malden came down with it, having to run back to the ball. Only got a yard. The, uh, when they bring pressure, it's working. Not making the right read there. My hope is that eventually one of those plays really burns them. So we'll just continue to run our offense and hope it's enough. Got to convert a big third down here, though. So far, we are perfect on the day on our third down conversions. Looking for another one. Bed good. Oh, the pass just broken up by the DB. It's fourth and seven. We might go for this, though. Well, it's five wide here on fourth and seven. You guys already know I'm looking for Marquise Jackson. We can't get the pass off. He had his man burned, but Grayson takes a sack. Venables gets in there and just, oh, right as he was about to release it, just can't get the pass off. That's a real shame. Turnover on downs. Great field position for Duke. Well, if they want to blitz, we're going to do it as well. Here on first down, looking to really shut them down. It's a handoff. Safety blitz, enough to hold them to one. Looking for some good coverage on this second and nine. They bring a man in motion. They're going to hand it off. And oh my gosh, Durham Finch just blew up his man and got the tackle for loss. It's third and long for Duke now. Uh, maybe a chance to hold him to a field goal after the turnover on downs. So we are going to give the quarterback all the time in the world to throw this one. Just going to try to drop back into coverage and hope that that's enough as they threw what's essentially a screen. Uh, they get five yards, but it's fourth down and they will have to kick that field goal. And they're coming out in the pump formation. So we're ready to fake or to see the fake. Um, I have no idea what to expect. Why are they punting it from where they're at? Are you going to tell me that they can't even attempt a field goal from there so the defense truly just holds and that is an absolutely baffling play unless they bring pressure i think marquise jackson's gone finally gonna get the job done as he catches it through the contact safety got there just in time again if we could hit these guys in stride it would be touchdowns all day but that's a great first uh play of the drive We'll go with the fake jet to Marquise on this first down. If it works well, we're going to go back to the same formation and run the, uh, run the sweep. So we'll see if we can catch the defense off guard as Marquise will get some blocks and it's enough for the first down. That'll work. Little trickeration gets us uh, five yards. I'll take that every time. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to try the flea flicker on that play, but just didn't seem... Uh, safe with how much pressure they've been bringing. So instead, guys were open, but we'll scramble for the nine yards and get out of bounds. The big thing is just trying to avoid turnovers in this game. We know it's going to be a close one, and turnovers might be what end up losing it for us. Brayden Bennett, well, misdirection, loses a yard. It's third and two. I definitely don't want to have to kick a field goal, so if we don't pick this up, likely we'll be going for it, but... Well, we don't need to pick it up. We have Logan Malden somehow in bounds. We're going to call the hurry up so they don't have a chance to challenge that. And they're going to do it anyways. Ah, we just weren't quick enough. I think he was out of bounds here. I think this is getting overturned. Yeah, that's that's out of bounds. It's fourth and two. That's a real shame. Refs only needed one camera angle. No, they say it stands. Okay, thank you, Zebras. Helping us out big time there. It's first and goal. And Duke losing uh, a timeout there. I'm curious if they challenged it or if the refs took a look at it. But it is 7-3. First and goal about to be 14-3 as Brayden Bennett has absolutely no resistance finding the end zone. And now the defense just needs to come out for one more stop in this half. And we're going to look real good going back into the locker rooms. So just need to hold for two minutes here. I would love a stop. I would love a chance to score some more points, but if we can just prevent them from scoring any, that would work too. Their special teams might be able to do it though. Logan Malden, the first man up to get him and gets the tackle finally, but Duke is nearing field goal range. Or is this coming back? Oh, a little taste of their own medicine. They get hit with the clipping and it'll back them up to the 19. 
So if anything, that helps us quite a bit because it burns time off the clock that Duke won't be able to get back, even though they will desperately want it. Uh, and I got to say, I don't think that just bringing three men uh, on the pass rush is going to work. We're definitely going to have to go with the 4-3 here. We need to be able to pressure this quarterback, make it uncomfortable. We already have a couple of sacks, so... That's the goal here is they'll throw it out in the flat. And Charles Steele with the big hit drops Wesley Jones for a loss of two. I get worried when it's uh, Steele out in coverage like that open field because either he misses the tackle or he just destroys the guy. This is a wide open out route and see that time he's nowhere near the play, but it is third down. We're going to get real risky with this corner blitz on third and two and Charles Steele. We get the user in there. Let's take the time out. There might have been an injury, but it's fourth and one. And it will be the punt team for Duke out on the field. Again, five mile an hour wind coming at him. We'll shorten the length of this kick. Probably a considerable amount. And Marquise Jackson drops the punt, but then takes off and oh, just barely tripped up when he had a lot of space in front of him. I thought that was a touchdown. If he would have caught that cleanly, I think it is. We're going to give him a tester. Man, they just refuse to play a deep safety. Marquise Jackson. Is he gone? If he catches it in stride, he can't catch this in stride. There's always just a little bit of a jump, but he's pretty much gone 49 yards on the big play. It just amazes me that they refuse to play a deep safety against him. And it continues to burn him time and time again. Waiting, looking for Marquise. Can he get to the end zone? They say that he does. Well, that was all too easy, and we left him 54 seconds on the clock. It's a two-play touchdown drive, and we only took 16 seconds off the clock. So hopefully we don't give up points. If we do, I guess uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter all that much because we just scored, so it would just kind of be canceled out. Uh-oh, Rashad Chaney Jr., one of our, what is he, a defensive lineman out for the game. Little injury there. You hate to see it as they throw out in the flat. Charles Steele this time can't really get the tackle. Man, that guy did not want to go down. Uh, picks up five yards. Pick, uh, Duke going to the air. Sorry, I got a little distracted there. A cat in the background just ran into something. I don't really know what. Bring a little blitz on this uh, first down. See if Charles can get in here to disrupt it. 35 seconds. They're really trying to get there. And the blitz from the edge kind of was there. Everybody's missing this quarterback. And he got five yards out of the play. Clock's still moving, though. Oh, man. This is rough. I got burned. I wasn't alone. They're nearing field goal range awfully quickly. 12 seconds. They get out of bounds. One timeout left. Well, the blitzes seem to work. This quarterback... Only one incompletion, but if we can get in there and disrupt him, it helps out quite a bit. So first down, try to bring that pressure off the edge. Diggs is there for the tackle, and they're going to have to either spend their time out. Yeah, good. They took it at five seconds, and they're going to go for this. So five seconds, really only one play. We're going to go prevent just to make sure that they don't get anything out of this, and... It's not a Hail Mary, or maybe it is. Into the end zone, it's intercepted by Miles Baker. And he's not going to get a return on it. We do force the turnover, though, to end the half. So up one on the day in the turnover battle. We don't see that often. Very scary that that one was to the end zone. But we make it to the half up 21-3. They will get the ball. But if the defense continues to play this way, well, I think that you guys might be getting a back-to-back -back if you can just get that 100 likes. Again, if we win this game and you do hit the 100 likes, we're going back-to-back -to, -back to play the conference championship tomorrow. But, of course, we do have to get through these next two quarters. Frederick will kick us off into the second half, and we'll hope that, uh, man, our special teams has struggled today, but we'll hope the defense can continue to do well. Only giving up three points is pretty phenomenal. And I guess at this point, if the offense can score every time they see the field, it should be a win, but I want this to be a blowout. Uh, they were favored to win by Lee Corso. Man, this quarterback is breaking tackles. Somehow got four on that option. We're going to bring the blitz on this second down and hope for the best. Man in motion. It looks like it's going to be a run. It is. It goes up the middle. He breaks a tackle and just continues to fall forward and gets nine yards. So for a team that uh, really didn't run the ball a whole lot uh, this season or hasn't run the ball a whole lot this season, they're doing a very solid job. Uh, we're bringing pressure every time. And they're still getting positive yards. 
Passing, however, is in this team's DNA, so second and nine. We'll expect them now to go to the air. No. Another handoff out towards the edge. Durham Finch can't get the diving tackle. Mason Shelton kind of held up and digs, got blocked into the man and just, you know, able to trip him up. But that was close to being a touchdown. This Duke team has been more than capable at moving the ball. They just uh, haven't been able to score points very well. Quarterback scrambling and he's sacked. So again, just they move, they move, they move, and then it seems like they stall out. Hopefully we can get them off the field here. See what we can do with the blitz here on second and 14, just rushing five, and they're going to hand it off kind of out towards the edge. It's Kale Mackey and Charles Steele tag team and Jordan Waters to bring him down and force the third and long. Let's go ahead and see now. What does our man coverage have in store for us on this one? They'll step back to pass, and it's intercepted. Shelton, unfortunately, running into Stokes Jr., but second turnover of the day, and the defense just on fire here in the snow. Manny Stokes with a good one. Oh, look at this. They came out. Not really any deep safeties. Okay, they do shift over. We're going to send uh jackson deep anyways just to pull that safety out of the area because now we have brain bennett wide open oh almost got three guys with the step back cheese still 15 yards on first down for us i almost feel like we should be burning the clock at this point but i want to run up the score and prove to the pollsters why we belong you know above top 20 you know the bcs in the media poll not giving us any love now to be fair to them we have struggled against some teams that we should have beat easily, but, you know, that's no excuse for uh, tr disrespecting us like that. Isaiah Conley comes in. Oh, what a hit. He just went flying across the ground, but he got enough for the first down. Could be another big play. Marquise Jackson, deep post outside the pocket. A's open. Can we get it there? Oh, we're lucky that one wasn't picked off. I was way too late making that throw. That one is absolutely on me. Is we're going to try a little fake fly stretch and see if it works. I don't expect this play to be great. Unless Bennett can ah, just get out to the edge, man. 17 is really quick. So it's third and a mile for us. I'm going to make an interesting decision here. Calling the read option. I like what I see well enough. We're going to run it and expect maybe to go for this on fourth down. Conley got six. It's fourth and seven. And yeah, we're going to go for this. So it gives us four receivers out to the left as we will look to scramble to the right and hope that they come across for us. A is going to be wide open. It is Marquise Jackson, and he held on to that through the contact. This man is an animal coming down with that catch. Really just no business completing that through the contact, but he does it anyways, keeps the drive alive, and now hopefully we can just see Braden Bennett continue to run and this clock continue to tick down. Set up to look for the bubble screen here again. Second and four. It's been working pretty well for us so far today. Works well enough for another first down that time. I've been really enjoying the uh, the bubble screens as of late. They seem to be working pretty well with our uh, with our team, with our offense. So I just will utilize them a couple times a game. On this second and six. Going to step back to pass. T uh, kind of a risky throw. Mobley's wide open though. That's a route that is either a home run or an interception, so glad it worked out that time for a first and goal. Puts Grayson up to 200 yards passing on the day as we'll look to run this one into the end zone. Braden Bennett, nothing doing, gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. We're going to go for this uh, on the ground still. Hand it off, give it to Bennett again. Let him spin back inside. That was supposed to be to the outside, but the cut to the inside works well. It's third and goal from the one. And that's actually going to end our third quarter. So as we head into the fourth quarter, we are inches away from making this a three-score game. The defense has been phenomenal. We are actually winning a turnover battle. And we are six minutes of uh, in-game gameplay away from the conference championship. So let's go ahead and just run this up the middle to start the fourth quarter. No problem for Bennett as he scores on what they say is a zero yard touchdown run, but it makes it 28 to three. So Duke still has a chance at an eight win season, but it's not gonna be against us. We can expect to be 10 and 12 at the end of this quarter and they can expect to be seven and four. Four sacks, two picks for us so far. 
Of course, we're not done yet. This defense, I feel like, still could have a little bit more in them. As if they run the ball, it's a mistake, so they're going to pass. Oh, man, Miles Baker got just burned bad by the Robertson there. He's the 20 yard for Duke. Well, we're just going to continue to keep our coverage the same. I'm not worried about these guys beating us. Quarterback scrambling, I'm a little bit worried about, but if we can just uh, pick up, what, our fourth, fifth sack of the game? Fine with that. Going to get a little bit complicated here with the blitz. Drop the defensive tackles back into coverage. Quarterback scrambling again, and he slides down, worried about taking another shot. He's got himself a third and seven. Only one of five, 20% on the day for the Blue Devils as third and seven. I will look to blitz Charles Steele getting some pressure. We hit the quarterback and Miles Baker drops the interception or maybe just did enough to break it up and it's fourth and down, seven yards to go. And Duke will be punting this one away again since it's the fourth quarter. They're punting into the five mile an hour headwinds which could mean that uh, Marquise has a good return. We'll definitely hope for it. As, nope. Oh, just couldn't get to the edge only five yards that time. Well, I think we can pretty much safely say that this game is wrapped up and we're going to start to burn the clock on this fourth quarter. Right, try to avoid any injuries. And you know what? Let's bring in the backup, uh, the second team offense. Give some players that we don't see often a chance to play. Williams stepping back, looking to make a pass. Finds Braden Bennett, who I guess technically is still the second string running back. Uh, that was a nice little throw. David Williams, maybe the first pass of his career. I'm not sure, but it's complete. Got us a first down. And that will allow us just to continue to burn the clock on this one. Um, I mean, I'm impressed. Let's, let's see if the backups can score a touchdown. Of course, if they score this touchdown, it's going to be via the running game but uh, we'll have a little Williams to Williams handoff as we hand off to Malcolm and he's gonna just get back to the line of scrimmage freshman can't quite get it done there so on third down we'll drop back to pass again and there's a man wide open Williams has it and he might be gone oh my goodness if you're Duke you're feeling real bad about that one is Malcolm Williams getting the catch on the throw from David Williams as they go 62 yards to the house. 35 to three now. So the defense has to come back out. We are gonna keep the first string defense in because I don't wanna give up an easy touchdown to these guys. Uh, but I'm happy with the way the second string played. Um, feels good. Two minutes to go. We really haven't done a great job at burning the clock, I guess. <laughs> Didn't expect to have a play that big as they're going to hand the ball off. Maybe a sign that they're conceding. There's certainly no hopes for them to win as we will try to bring the blitz on first and 10. Just a little one. Guys open and yeah, there's one over the middle. So they're moving the ball well on us here, but the clock's not in their favor and neither is the scoreboard. Another first down for us to contend with. I would love a stop, but I'm not sure we'll get the chance. Maybe our defense just too tired. Giving up 10 yards on that one. Another first down for Duke. Thank goodness we were able to uh, get that done before these guys figured out how to play. Durham Finch with a massive diving tackle, but 10 more yards given up. Uh, this is becoming a little bit ridiculous on this first down. We're ready to blitz. The pressure gets there finally, slowing them down a little bit. We'll hit the quarterback, and the clock will just start to move a little bit more. And if they score in garbage time, I'm not going to be happy about it. Uh, kind of a, a cheap way to do it. Blocking okay. Charles Steele with another big hit. It's third and nine. And they're taking timeouts now. So not really what we like to see, but it is what it is. And third and nine, trying to bring the blitz. It's a screen. Tried to get the sack anyways, and oh, <laughs> they almost got it. Fourth and one. Take their second time out. They're going to go for it. Don't agree with the decision. Think that's a uh, pretty low brow, but they're going to do it anyways. It's a draw play, and it doesn't work. Turnover on down, so Duke, screw you for trying. Could have just had your free points. Instead, you get embarrassed, and the fans are booing you. I'm surprised the sta stadium is still so full. Because I think in real life they would have all left, especially in the snow here. But it's going to be enough for us to get the win as we take the knee. And just for the memes, 
Uh, we're going to have, I guess, Braden Bennett come in at quarterback and throw a toss as the final play of the game, just in case this is a bad toss. I wanted to be safe, but yeah, Conley getting a couple extra yards. Eight yards, actually. That's pretty impressive. And we will end the game 35-3. to What a fantastic one start to finish from both sides of the ball. Um, just really solid. When the defense started to give up yards, they eventually cracked down and stopped Duke from finding anything but a field goal. And the offense just getting it done throughout the entire thing. So very, very good way to, I think, seal our spot as the division champions and give us our place in the ACC Conference Championship for a spot in the playoff. Um, you love to see it. What a way to bounce back from the uh, tough game last time out where we just barely hung on to win. Again, this team continues to be so inconsistent. Uh, whether or not we win the ACC Championship game will just come down to which team shows up to play. Not worried about Notre Dame being 99 overall because it doesn't seem like the overall of the teams that we play matter. But, you know, maybe uh, it'll make us look better if we beat them. Who knows? They did barely outrush us, but we passed for 275. We had some really big throws on the day. They scored the field goal in the first quarter on their opening drive, but we held them scoreless for the rest of it. And just a complete victory all the way around. Braden Bennett, 20 carries for 61 yards and three touchdowns. But Durham Finch, two sacks, three tackles for loss. Just one of the many people who stood out on defense today. So we get to that 10-2, uh, and two, and we'll go ahead and advance the week because we're going to go through the week 14 bye before we end the episode. Hey, we got to level up. Who knows? Maybe we can use this to great effect. Um, we get Kevin West to commit. We're still locked up by Kyle Edwards, but... I'm going to put this into the lockpick. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's cheeky and we can unlock him. What are we ranked? Coach of the year finals. Okay. Finals for the Heisman, the Lombardi, the Remington, the Thorpe, the best returner, the Nagurski, the best linebacker, the Bednarik, the Maxwell, the O'Brien, the Walter Camp. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just a lot of XP and really the reason why we leveled up. We move up to 15th in the country. So fantastic news there. And let's just right away go and do this. Uh, part, part of me thinks it would be smart to go with the closer. You know, we would get 500 points for recruiting. Might be smart to go with a little of intent and get an extra 1,500 recruiting points for the offseason. But I'm going to take a risk and go with the locksmith here. I've never tried to unlock a player uh, this long after they've locked us out, but we're going to try it anyways. Three guys committed. Who knows? Maybe it works. I doubt it. I have to try that. This is just pure science at this point. Can we open the door? No, we can't. So uh, I don't know if it's because we've fallen far enough away or just because we waited too long. Legitimately, I've never tried this before, but uh, we needed the locksmith anyways. So maybe not the best time to do it, but we have it for the future. And we have all of our points taken care of. Nobody ready for visits. So there's really not much that we can change at this point other than just hoping that we can pull away from these teams. And we just need to, yeah, just, just hope that these guys start to commit in the last week or two. And that, that way we can not have to worry quite as much in the off season. Um, I might go through and just add a couple of people onto the board that want to play for us uh, that we just haven't looked at yet. So I did fill up our board with a bunch of players who wanted to play for us. They are not necessarily great players. In fact, most of them were pretty bad, but it would be better to get guys in the mid 60 overalls than to have to deal with walk-ons. So hopefully we get a couple of those guys to commit pretty easily. Uh, I don't like our chances, but we had to do something because I have not done a good job recruiting this season. Um, Top. 25 looks like it won quite a bit. Let's see. It must all be down here. Uh, Oklahoma State lost to Texas. Thankfully, Washington lost to now number five, Oregon. Any more people dropping out? LSU, Florida State, Kansas, Colorado, Arkansas. Good news there. So we jumped up five spots kind of impressively. How about the media poll? They have been disrespectful for us for quite a while and we are only up to 20th we did jump up those five spots but not 
exactly how we envisioned it. And in the BCS, we're now up to 17th, up from 24th. So that's a massive jump in the rankings. And I gotta say, I enjoy it. Let's just double check uh, our conference standings to make sure that we're still up top. And we are. Uh, and we still have our win against Miami. And they have to play Pitt. So just to make sure nothing goes wrong, I want Pitt to beat Miami. Uh, but we should be in the conference championship. What happened? Notre Dame did not lose to NC State. So we will be playing the Fighting Irish in the ACC championship game. That's very scary, but apparently we have a Heisman finalist. I think it's Grayson McCall. He has found his way back onto the list at fifth. We don't expect him to win. He shouldn't win, but the free XP that it's going to give us is fantastic. And it's a little resume builder for him as well, as he'll be looking to get drafted. Um, has our bowl projection changed before we sim through the bye week? No, still the Orange Bowl, still against Cincinnati. 10 and 2. We hit double digits uh, on the season. Let's go ahead and advance the week to the next bye, and we'll save that bye and the conference championship for next week. But we can go ahead and see how things shape out, and maybe if we can pick up a couple of recruits uh, going through this week 14. Chad Staggs, the defensive coordinator, gets a level up. So one more thing that's looking good for us. Brock Hampton's going to go to Clemson, interestingly enough. Tons of recruiting battles with really good players. We need those to start going our way. Get a little bit of XP, but not much else there. We can go ahead and uh, level up Chad Staggs, but not too worried about doing the rest. Um, Gosh, do we go with a little bit of block shedding? Do we go power moves or do we go coverage? I think we got to go coverage. Give him the extra man because our secondary is like the biggest thing that I'm worried about. Sure, there's teams that run the ball all over us, but I really want to be able to lock them down on defense. And oh my gosh, I didn't notice. We're number 10. How did we jump up five more spots in the rankings? How many teams in front of us had to have lost for that to happen? If any, or did they just give us the pull inertia? Alabama loses against Auburn, so... Uh, that's their fourth loss of the season. USC loses to Notre Dame, so we'll be playing the number eight team in the uh, country for our conference championship. Ohio State loses to number two, Michigan. TCU lost to Oklahoma. Ole Miss lost to Mississippi State. Oregon State lost to Oregon. Uh, Oklahoma State and Miami both dropped out. So the coaches poll really starting to love us. Look at that. We're on the first list, the top 10. Um, and we aren't the only pe person from our conference, so that's good news for our, our conference prestige now. Two teams in the top 10. Up at the media poll, they have not liked us. We jump up six spots to 14, and then the BCS, I'm going to expect 12. Uh, yep, sure enough. So, starting to get a little bit of respect. We have to show up against Notre Dame. So, onward and upward is definitely uh, a good representation of what this team has been accomplishing the past few weeks. Just continuing to win 10-2. and two. Could it be that we make the playoff? I really hope so. But unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. Again, I want to reiterate this. If you guys get this video to 100 likes within the first day, we'll post back-to-back -back, uh, uploads and we'll play the conference championship game and finish out the, the rest of the regular season tomorrow. So if you want to know when that video goes live, feel free to subscribe as well. Uh, while you're down there doing those two things, please head to the description. You can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter and uh, our community Discord as well, of course, as a link to get the college football revamped mod if you want it for yourself. That being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.